Hey, lost my laundry list here. Today arrived our solar cell. This is a 12 volt solar cell with a maximum uh, power of 25 watt. The idea here is to charge with this solar cell in a controlled way this lithium ion battery pack. In order to do that, to make a controlled charge and discharge, we need the controller that actually came with the solar cell that prevents overcharging and, and uh, also prevents that the, the battery pack goes too low on power. Now then with that 12 volt battery pack we go into that power inverter which in turn allows us to plug in a 120 volt uh, fountain with a pump. So the pump is low in power consumption but it is 120 volt and that was the goal to, to let the fountain run in the same way as plugging it in into a power outlet. So you may ask why not changing the pump to a low voltage 9 or 12 voltage uh, uh, pump but the idea here is twofold. First of all I don't want to mess with this quite expensive fountain and second I want to have so to say a doomsday backup plan that allows me to have 120 volt generated from our solar cell. So that's the plan. Now let's see how that turns out in practice. We start with a few characterizations. First I want to check the output voltage of that panel if there is any. Uh, so let's first get rid of this insulation here. Oh, this is a very tiny wire. Uh, right now the panel is inverted so that no light is shining on it and no voltage is generated. Once I turn it over we want to make sure that these cables don't touch each other especially after the insulation is gone. Of course it won't generate full voltage because this is just the light in my room here. So I have the voltmeter. Yeah. yeah, and we got a few volts, 5 volts, of course that's not much, but you virtually have no light here, no sunlight for sure. This is light coming from the LED in the living room, so that seems okay. What I do next is I connect the uh, solar panel to the controller. Red is plus, goes to the plus connection of the solar input here, black is minus goes to the minus connection here. Let's start with minus. The controller is now connected to the solar cell and I will expose it to some light here that we can actually see the control LED of the controller lighting up. I do that on three. One, two, three. And we see barely the uh, LED, the green LED flashing and according to the manual it's flashing with 0.2 seconds on, 0.2 seconds off indicating of a battery float which is correct because the battery is not even uh, connected yet. Okay so we have assembled everything but before we install it in the field we want to test the basic function so we have here the solar panel. Again, it is a 12 volt standard 20 watt solar panel. The output of that panel goes into this controller. Make sure that you have the right polarity, plus and minus. Then we have the energy buffer, our lithium ion 12 volt battery that is again connected to the controller. And then we have the power converter or actually inverter it is called, that uh, transforms from 12 volt to 120 volt so that we can basically plug in the uh, fountain and, and it should, should then run on 120 volts. We will test that uh, in a minute. So this little power converter uh, 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 is 120 watts, it should be plenty for the fountain. Um, so the check the first check we do is we want to see if when I start a battery, switch on the battery, if my uh, power inverter um, powers up. Uh, 
and that is the case we have green light so now we could in principle hope that we can plug in just a regular power outlet here a power plug in here and power a device with a power consumption of less than 120 watts but running on 120 volt let's try so first we check the water fountain itself if it runs on ordinary power from the power outlet takes a while for the water to run but here it comes and we have also the LED lights burning let's turn it off again and the hope of course is that we achieve the same result when I just turn on the battery now of course there's not enough light to substantially load the uh, battery pack but we hope that the Nebraska summer will help us out here and also needless to say that these components none of them are water resistant so they need to be carefully uh, shielded for, for moisture and yet allow for ventilation we will take care of that later and also I will do, redo the wiring to make sure that this is safe all right I turn this on this guy is back to green and now let's see if I can plug it in and the fountain is running without power from the outlet of course the power comes from the battery now how long that will run and how much uh, uh, my solar cell will help us to charge up the battery that will be seen i'm aware that this component the converter and the inverter both of them consume power on their own um, so uh, let's see if we did not uh, if we have enough storage in this battery that that remains to be tested so we read it the wiring everything is nicely insulated um, the uh, inverter here sits on a cushion to dampen out the uh, noise from the uh, fan and the whole components are now in a water sealed container we put a lid with a with a seal on it and add another lid there's still enough room for ventilation we tested it there's no significant or any measurable uh, heat that comes from this critical component here the uh, inverter so we should be good to go so it's time to fire up the solar cell here we go by the way this is a homemade holder from a fence post and a hinge and then we have this uh, cable Exciting moment. Let me connect the cable, plug it in. It's rising and running. This is the final product after cleaning up everything. All the fountain is running. Another shot this evening, and then we will check how long it can last when the sun is down. So far, so good. 